Now in this video I'm going to demonstrate for you the actual motion and movement of flexion and extension in the way the overall cranial mechanism moves in a global fashion. And it's important to make the distinction because we actually have two different phenomenons taking place when we're referring to flexion and extension. In one way we may be referring to the actual flexion and extension of a particular cranial bone, but we can also be referring to the overall movement of the cranial mechanism. And here's where it's important for me to break it down and for you not to get confused. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to talk to you about how the entire cranial mechanism from a global perspective moves in flexion and extension. Now remember we said that those two oscillating extremes, those movements of flexion and extension are what drive the movement of the cerebral spinal fluid and the pumping of the blood that carries neurotransmitters, that cleans the brain, all of the great things that cranial osteopathy is going to be able to do in terms of promoting brain health is going to come when we can have an effect on the overall flexion and extension of the cranial mechanism and also when we come to assessing it and knowing what areas need to be treated. So first I want you to think of the cranial mechanism as a kind of hydraulic pump. Remember earlier I referred to the pumping of the heart, the different systems, diaphragmatic breathing that have a kind of an in and out effect or a pump 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 effect the movement of the cranial mechanism actually works like a hydraulic pump in the sense that imagine the cranium like a cistern or a container that can fill with fluid, right? So imagine it kind of expanding out, opening up and allowing fluid to kind of flow in and then imagine a cistern kind of coming in and pumping and pushing in order to flush that fluid out, right? So imagine an old-fashioned bicycle pump. What are you doing? You're pulling up the handle in order to be able to allow air to come in, and then you're pushing down in order to be able to pump that air into the bicycle tire, right? So that is an example of a pump. In this case, it's hydraulic because we've got fluid, cerebral spinal fluid and blood that is being pumped by the cranial mechanism. Now know that because the brain has its ability to adapt, we refer to that now as neuroplasticity, when certain areas of the cranium actually come together and flex, we can't have an actual compression overall of the brain, right? There, we need to conserve a certain amount of volume. So as some areas of the brain of the cranial mechanism come together, there are actually other areas that simultaneously come apart. This adaptation, this kind of two-phase um, reaction that goes on can be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to show you what I mean. Inflection, the occiput, right, which is our bone here at the base of the skull, and our sphenoid, we would contact the two like this. As they come together in flexion, in flexion, the occiput would feel to you as if it was rolling inwards towards the brain stem. Simultaneously, if the sphenobasillary symphysis is moving in a healthy and harmonious fashion, the sphenoid would also feel as if it was coming downward in to embed it into the face. So this is what I mean when I say we have a kind of an internal rotation where the two bones are coming together in flexion. When this happens, you actually have a shortening of the diameter of the skull from an anterior posterior perspective, which means that in your hands you would actually feel as if the skull is actually shortening from the front and the back. Now like I said before, you don't have an overall internal rotation of all of the bones of the skull. That would mean that the brain was being compressed, maybe more than it needs to. So as the occiput and sphenoid are coming together in internal rotation or flexion, the other bones of the skull, the bodies of the temporals and the parietals, actually flare out. When the occiput and the sphenoid come apart in extension, or also referred to sometimes as external rotation, 
you're going to feel as if the occiput is actually kind of rolling backwards you know towards you if you were working with your patient lying on their back you're going to feel as if the sphenoid bones are actually coming up and outward so they're actually coming apart remember we said that the sphenobasilary symphysis are two bones that move together in a harmonious fashion without actually touching so we have flexion and extension when the occiput and the sphenoid come apart in extension you're going to have a lengthening, a perceived lengthening of the skull from an anterior posterior perspective meaning from the front and the back you're going to feel as if the skull is lengthening as it lengthens the opposite happens the bodies of the temporal and the parietals actually kind of come back in and kind of seem to collapse upon themselves now when you come to doing vault holds this is where you're going to feel sometimes the parietals for example coming apart upward and then collapsing and coming back together or you might feel in an occipital vault hold the occiput actually feels like it's kind of coming outward in extension and then kind of coming back downward and rolling inward towards the brainstem in internal rotation in flexion. So what you have is the occiput and sphenoid coming together in flexion, coming apart in extension. When they come together in flexion, it's going to feel as if the overall cranium is kind of shortening in its diameter flexion, extension. When we have a shortening of that diameter, when we have a flexion of the occiput and the sphenoid, the body of the temporals and the parietals actually come and flare up and out. The opposite then happens simultaneously when the sphenoid and the occiput actually come apart in extension. The opposite happens is the temporals and the parietals actually kind of collapse down and come back in together. This is what I mean when I say during flexion and extension we could be referring to how the overall cranial moves in a global fashion and this is what I've demonstrated for you just right now in this video.